behind the seaplane terminal on the right, that building you see with the grass roof, that's the Vancouver Convention Center. That six acre living roof is the largest living roof in Canada and the second largest non-industrial living roof in North America. The roof landscape is a grass habitat, habitat characteristic of coastal British Columbia. Besides containing many native grasses, it also contains four colonies of bees that actually provide honey for one of the restaurants located underneath. The building also has a uh, fish habitat built right into the foundation, a seawater heating and cooling system, and outside water treatment. We served as the International Broadcast Center during the 2010 winter. As you can see off on our right, this white building is Canada Place. It's also part of the Vancouver Convention Center, and it's also known locally as the Five Sails because of the peaked roof. The building also contains the Pan Pacific Hotel and also the administrative offices of the Port of Vancouver. Canada Place also serves as our main cruise ship terminal, Vancouver being the leading home port to Alaska and the only gateway through Canada's inside passage. COVID, we used to average about a million cruise passengers a year in and out of Vancouver. Canada Place was built in 1985 on top of the historic Canadian Pacific Railway Pier. Canadian Pacific Railway Empress ships used to depart from these docks the early 1900s, carrying passengers and cargo to and from India, China, Japan, and Australia. The building also served as the Canadian Pavilion during Expo 86, a world exposition that was held here during the city's centennial year.
collection of older buildings you see is Gastown, which is Vancouver's oldest neighborhood. Before Vancouver was even a settlement, that area was the site of a sawmill owned and operated by a fellow named Edward Stamp. And he asked his friend Jack Dayton to build a bar near the sawmill since it would be the only tavern from 40 kilometers around. Dayton struck a deal with off-duty sawmill workers that if they built him a bar, they could have all the whiskey they could drink in a single sitting. They must have been highly motivated because they managed to build up a bar in about 12 hours. Jack Dayton's tavern was a huge success and a town formed around it as he told tales of his adventures as a ship's captain. He was nicknamed Gassy Jack for his notorious storytelling. Once the town site around him was made official, he actually had to leave since he had no claim to the land where his bar sat. He was basically just a squatter. So he purchased a new plot of land and built a new bar at the corner of what are now Carroll and Powell Streets. The area was first named Granville, and then the name was changed to Vancouver. Ahead of us and to the right, you see docks and cranes that form part of the port of Vancouver. It's a year-round deep water port with over 600 kilometers of coastline under its navigational jurisdiction. Vancouver 
sees over 3,100 ships visited annually, and they handle 150 million tons of cargo and about 3.4 million containers. Many of these ships cross the Pacific Ocean to our trading partners in Asia. At 21 knots, it takes about 14 days to get from Vancouver to Hong Kong.
uh, coming into view or on the right here, uh, you see another large uh, gray concrete uh, grain elevator. And this is the Richardson International Terminal. And they actually uh, export about 6 million tons of grain from this facility around the Pacific Rim every year. Now, those of you who are from Winnipeg might recognize the Richardson name. They're a very long-established and wealthy Winnipeg family. And uh, for many years, uh, I know that the uh, tallest building in Winnipeg is the Richardson building. And that's the same family that owns this particular grain handling facility. shipyard on Canada's west coast. Since 1902, uh, shipbuilding companies here in Vancouver have provided all kinds of construction and repair services to the marine community. Now getting a ship or barge, like the one on the left hand side, into a dry dock begins with keel blocks that are arranged along the floor and these will form a cradle for the ship's hull and hold it upright. They then submerge the dock, they tow the ship with it and position it over the keel blocks. All the water is then pumped out and the floating dock rises, bringing the ship up with it. That larger dock on the right can handle a ship of up to 36,000 tons. Those large blue and yellow sides that you see are actually gigantic water tanks, and those are what can be either filled or drained of water, depending upon whether the dock needs to be lowered or raised. Also want to point out in the right side dry dock, the yellow one, uh, you see these big mesh curtains hanging uh, at this end of it. Uh, that's because one of the things they frequently do uh, to ships when they're in dry dock is they work on the hull and uh, that involves both uh, painting and sandblasting and those big mesh curtains keep debris from blowing into the water. Yeah. 